A tiny house on wheels can be a dream home for a young college student, but there is a tremendous amount of labor and effort that goes into constructing one. Luckily, there was one student here in Florida who was up to the task, and today we're about to visit his absolutely beautiful home on wheels. Hey Bradley. Hey Bryce, how are you? Good mate, good to meet you. You as well. This place looks amazing. Thank you very much. How long have you been living here now? I've been living here three months. Took me about a year and a half to build it. And the spot that you've found for it, I don't think I've ever quite seen a tiny house in this kind of location before. Yeah, I'm really happy about it and uh, looking at this video, you wouldn't know that we're right in the middle of Jacksonville. It's right in the middle of a city with a a creek behind me. Here in Florida, that actually looks like the kind of place where you'd expect to see some alligators swimming about. Actually, I haven't even seen any yet after three months, but I'm sure they're out there. So what was it that actually made you want to build a tiny house? Um, it started off more financial than anything. Right out of high school, I went and paid a year's worth of rent and decided that wasn't for me. So I moved back home and saved up some money to pay for it all cash and build it. My family thought it was never going to happen until I towed home a 27-foot flatbed trailer. And then they started to ask more questions and understood this is something I'm actually going to try and do. So you've called this house Rolling Quarters. How did that come about? Yeah, it's kind of a twofold meaning. I thought for a long time playing with a bunch of different, you know, puns to name it. And Rolling Quarters, obviously it's living quarters and it rolls. So that's the obvious reason. The other thing is Rolling Quarters like saving money. So the whole idea was to pay for everything cash and go against the societal flow of financing things. So tell me a little bit about the materials that you've <clears throat> constructed this from. Well I started up gaining a lot of things from Craigslist like the trailer and the windows and then everything else I bought from Home Depot so I definitely saved a lot of, a lot of money using Reclaimed. What's this cladding that you've got on here? This is regatta blue vinyl siding from a local company and I went with it so that I could save a lot of weight. What are the dimensions of this house? The trailer is 27 feet by eight and a half wide with a five foot porch, so the house is 22. And the porch is definitely a really nice touch there as well. Thank you, yeah, that was definitely something that was important in the design process to have that. I didn't like a lot of the newer tiny houses that were more box shaped, so definitely makes it feel more homey. And adds a really nice southern touch as well. Absolutely, you know, looking at homes built 50 years ago down here, they all have front porches built in, and it's great for the community and really slows you down. But all the new houses, they don't have that. So I definitely wanted to put that on mine. And you get to truly capitalize on that view out there, don't you? Yeah, absolutely. Well, I would love to have a look inside the house and have a look at what you've done. Absolutely, come on in. Thank you. This is seriously cool. Thank you very much. I love the kind of earthy feel that you've created with this design. Yeah, that was definitely important to me. That's why I kept the ceiling, you know, without any stain on it. All I did was put polyurethane on it, and it really makes it feel homey and kind of a cabin feel. The way that you've pulled in these branches and everything looks really good as well. Right, thank you, yeah. I really like, especially considering where I'm looking to park out in the woods, that cabin feel, so having branches and greenery really make it feel nice and cabiny. Now, it's only been a short while since Irma has passed through, and you did not fare particularly well during that, did you? No, I did not. Um, the creek behind me is beautiful right now, but when a Category 5 hurricane comes through, flood zone means a flood zone. And honestly, it was a lot of stubbornness that caused me to be in the flood where I could have towed it otherwise. But I had just gotten here a few weeks earlier. I was all set up, and I really didn't think it was going to go four feet high right here. So in my mind, all the work was done. And I felt like I shouldn't have to do anything more because it was all done. And so, you know, as the night rolled on and the water got higher, I, I kind of realized that it was a big mistake. And I definitely learned from it. I can actually really empathize with how you feel in that respect because there is such a tremendous amount of work into building one of these things. And when you've completed a project, the thought of having to do one more thing can just put you over the edge. So I totally get it. But so after the hurricane had passed and the flood had caused some damage to the house, how extensive was the damage and what was the process of repairing that all like? 
The worst part about repairing after the flood was how I had to do it right then and in the next couple days because it was water damage and if you don't get to that there's going to be mold. So ripping up all the floors, taking everything out, tearing out the insulation is nothing I wanted to be doing while I had class to go to. You know, I run track for the school and so it was really a stressful time for me. However, after I got new floors in and everything dried out, putting everything back together was like a puzzle you're doing the second time. It really went a lot quicker and made things a lot, you know, made me feel a lot better. Well, I'm glad mm -hmm. you have a dry home again. <laughs> Thanks, I am too. And so we've come right into your lounge area, haven't we? Right, yeah, this is, this is my lounge area. This is my couch right now, it has a futon, but I'm gonna build some cushions for it later on. And underneath, I've got storage in the back and then some old lockers in the front. So those are good for storage of shoes and everything else. And then you've got a breakfast bar area over here. Yeah, I was kind of hard to decide if I wanted them facing at each other or into the window and I thought the window would be great because you wouldn't feel as claustrophobic. And you'll notice I don't have blinds anywhere in the house. Um, that was mainly because this is the only place I've parked so far and I don't really need them. So if I ever move the house to a more crowded area, blinds will be the next thing that go in. Sure. So here you can still walk about naked? Not this side of the house, <laughs> but the other side I can. And you've got your television, of course? Yeah, I put in a television on a swivel here so that it doesn't take up any ground space. And it's really good because I can swivel it out this way and face this side when I'm trying to sit neat here or I can lean back in the corner and tilt it that way as well. And then above us here we've got a small storage loft area and what's this up here? That's my roommate. That's Peanut the snake. <laughs> You've got a snake in here? Yeah of course they would get too lonely without someone else in here so, <laughs> so I picked him. Awesome but what kind of snake is he? He's a Brazilian rainbow boa. Just got him about a year ago and so he's real easy to take care of. Right, what's it like having a snake inside a tiny house? Um, most of the time I don't even notice him because he's up there. You only have to feed him about once a week or two weeks, they can go. Whereas with any other animal you have to feed him every day. So it really lets me travel and other things without worrying too much about leaving. Yeah. Well, I'm going to have to meet him later, but right now let's uh, move on into the kitchen space. Sure. So I really like how you've designed it so that there really is just one corridor going right the way back down to the other end of the house because it really does give you a sense of open space in here, doesn't it? It really does. And that's one thing I wanted to be able to do is look all the way to the other end of the house yeah. and see through that window to make it really feel a lot longer instead of just a door or something else. It definitely accomplishes that. And I like how long you've got the kitchen space as well. Yeah, here I might have gone a little overkill. I have about eight feet of workspace, which is more than most apartments have. And then you've got the fridge over here? Yeah, I do. Um, this is a 10 cubic foot fridge and I lifted it up so that I could put the convection underneath it and a little bit more storage underneath. You've got quite a lot of shallow storage there as well. I do. Um, this is my shower behind this wall and between the studs I decided to put the wall on the other side and make those three and a half inch storage. Perfect. Can we have a look in the bathroom? Absolutely. Come on. This is it. Got the nature's head composting toilet there? Absolutely. How are you finding using that one here? After three months I have no complaints. It's a little weird to get used to and weird to tell your friends how to use it, but other than that there's no issue with it. And then your shower's there? Yeah, this is my shower. It's a 36 by 36 fiberglass shell, all one piece, so it's really simple. Um, I picked that one up off the side of the road, actually. I was out for a run and saw the shower and sprinted home to grab the truck. Um, luckily, it was still there, so that was free. And then what's this area behind you here? Right here's my, my desk area for now. I'm in college, so I need a place to study and get on my computer and things. And I don't like the idea of, of mixing work space with your play space. So when I'm on the couch, I like to relax. But back here, it's kind of a separate office area where I can get my work done. What do you study? Accounting. Accounting? Yeah. So you're going to get used to sitting at a desk then? Yeah. I mean, that's just my degree. Who knows after that? Fair enough. Um, but it really helped me with all the, the finances of the deal. Another thing this space acts as is potential future closet space. Because as you can see on this side, is where I hang all my clothes and have my, you know, storage area. Right. But, you know, if there's ever someone else that's going to move in here, 
they have this exact same amount of space over on this side. Gotcha. You've got a really nice deep sink here in the kitchen too, haven't you? Yeah, thank you. I really tried to get the biggest one I could get because I don't like looking at houses with small sinks and thinking of how they're going to do all their dishes in that small thing. And if right. you don't cook a lot, that's probably okay. But I like to cook and create a lot of dishes and so it's easy just to throw them all in there. Very cool. Did you do all the cabinetry yourself? I did. I actually found these um, hardwood oak cabinet doors in a dumpster no. and then just used a bunch of scrap wood to frame around them and it really just worked out nice. And then I'm guessing this ladder here puts us into your sleeping loft. It does. Tell me about what you've used to create this ladder because this is really interesting. Yeah, in uh, all my research into tiny houses, I really liked people that are using the galvanized metal. It's definitely kind of a centerpiece in here. It really is. Well, can I have a look up in your loft? Absolutely. All Go right. For it. Hey, this is really nice up here. Yeah, this is it. You know, climb up the ladder and, and just a bed up here. I made it a foot extra, but pretty much it's all just for sleeping up here. I do have a little bit of storage over where the shower is. And then I have some more of those lockers over here. Nice. You know, but after three months, I still haven't put anything in them. So I still <laughs> have a lot of extra space. You've been living in this tiny house now for three months. How's it working out? I love it so far. I mean, I, every time I pull up at night to my house, you know, there's a smile on my face just because I built that and that's where I'm staying. And what has doing this tiny house project taught you about yourself? It taught me I can do more than I think I can, you know. Before doing some of these things like electrical, I thought I might contract that part out. But then after doing some research, you know, getting my hands dirty, and going through the whole process, it seems a lot simpler now. And so that's something that at first I thought I couldn't do, but with enough work, I found out I could. And what would you say the finished budget for this house would be? Somewhere around $15,246.82. Now that is a true accountant's answer. Yeah, kept all my receipts. No kidding you did. Wow, and what a remarkable figure to have completed a house to this standard. Thank you, yeah. I was a little impressed myself after hearing other people come out around, around 20 even for the reclaimed houses. Well, I am super impressed with what you've accomplished here. Thank you so much for sharing this incredible project with me. Absolutely, Thank thanks you. for coming. Rolling quarters makes a lot of sense while saving some dollars. There's no question about it that this DIY home has created a wonderful house for both Bradley and Peanut here. These two are gonna have an amazing time together during college. <laughs>